Hi everybody, my name is Ollie. Welcome back to the channel. I'm a junior doctor living and working in the northeast of England. Now, this is a video that will come out at the same time as my asthma exacerbation video. It's just kind of a bonus upload in the same slot, if you like, just to give you guys a bit of an update on what's going on, where I'm at with my training, and why I'm wearing this garish red lanyard. Well, to keep things extremely simple, I've got a new job. As you may or may not know, I think I've covered it before, foundation doctors, that is doctors in the first couple of years after they graduate from medical school, rotate jobs every four months for two years. So we do six jobs over two years. The idea being that it gives you the chance to work in lots of different areas of medicine, across medicine, surgery, and community specialties such as GP and psychiatry to make you a more rounded doctor before you commit to specialty training. And four months have gone by since I started working as a doctor back in August, believe it or not, which is so crazy fast. I've done four months working in hepatobiliary and transplant surgery. That's a subspecialty within general surgery, surgery that takes place within the abdomen, but I say specifically looking at problems of the liver, pancreas, bile duct, and transplant. A very niche area of medicine, very busy, very unwell patients. I've learned a lot. It's been a very hectic job, as I'm sure you've probably gathered from my last series of videos, but that job is now over. And I've moved on to my second job, which is now in academic medicine. Now I belong to what's called the Academic Foundation Programme. That's slightly different from the normal Foundation Programme, which is this series of six jobs over two years. The Academic Foundation Programme gives you four months of protected time. It takes you away from one of your clinical rotations and swaps it for an academic block, which you will dedicate to either working in research, medical education, or medical leadership. These areas where it was kind of realized that we don't have enough doctors that are trained in each of these areas. So it's a chance for people to develop those skills. And there are actually some quirks to this. So because of exactly where I work and the academic foundation program, which I applied for, I actually get two of these academic posts. I get one in my first year and one in my second year. And I've just started this post now and will be on it for four months until April. And the second quirk is that this post is actually in medical education research. So what most people think of when they think of medical education is quite rightly kind of standing at the front of a lecture theatre and teaching medical students about physiology, anatomy, or working in the anatomy labs and demonstrating anatomy, looking at cadavers and specimens to a crowd of onlooking medical students. But actually the other side to this is medical education research, which is more to do with the theory of learning, how and why we teach the way we teach, what teaching methods are effective, what is actually evidence-based and what isn't, as well as areas like selection and training. How should we select medical students? How should we select trainees in medicine and surgery for specialty stage applications? What is the experience of the workplace like for medical students and for doctors? These areas all fall within education research, and it is this area that this post of mine is actually based in. And this actually brings me on to why I'm even wearing this red lanyard at all, because this is the badge that I've been using, you probably won't be able to see, for the last four months, which is my foundation doctor badge. Um, this red lanyard is a clinical academic office lanyard because for the next four months, I'm actually working as an academic, as a research associate, which allows me to flip this badge over to the other side, which is my university ID badge, because what's really lovely about all of this is I did my first degree, my undergraduate degree at Newcastle University seven years ago. I started that and now I've come back. I no longer have a student ID badge, but a staff badge because I've come back as a research associate. So what I'm actually going to be doing for the next four months? Well, the answer is that it's really flexible and my supervisor has given me kind of free reign to do what I want, although I do have a rough structure, which looks more or less like this. One day a week doing some research work for NIHR, that is the National Institute for Health Research, so doing some work that's funded by them. One day a week working on an education research project of my own. I'm not really able to talk about what that is at the moment because it's in such early stages and I don't want anyone to steal my project <laughs> fundamentally one day a week doing audit and quality improvement work because these are really important boxes that I need to tick for my surgical applications in a couple of years when the time comes. So having some protected time to do those is wonderful. 
and then one day a week dedicated to teaching so I can be teaching medical students, PA students and allied health profession students as well and again the medical school here in Newcastle have been really keen to support that so I'm really really looking forward to that and then one day a week flexible to kind of address whatever areas need addressing. Now I think the obvious question that comes from this and certainly the one that my dad asked me when I explained how this works he was like so you're just not doing any proper work for the next four months you're just sort of dossing around as an academic. I do still have on-call shifts where I'm going to be working clinically as a doctor seeing patients they're just quite infrequent for the next four months certainly not as intense as my last job on surgery was so actually that change of pace is going to be really nice and I was looking forward to it but obviously I've got to keep my skills up keep developing my skills as a clinician and I will be going back onto a very busy medical job come April. So I definitely do have to keep my skills maintained. And then the only other thing I want to say before I wrap this up quickly is a massive thank you to you guys watching because ultimately most of the opportunities that allowed me to build my portfolio and become a competitive applicant for this academic job in which I now find myself, 99% of all of those things sprung up because of this YouTube channel and the opportunities that came about because of that and this platform that I've been able to build and all of that comes down to you guys who watch, who subscribe, who comment, who basically give me the means to do a lot of things that I want to do. It was only because of all of this that I was actually able to land this which was my top choice of programs. There is one job in medical education at this level in the entire northeast of England so I like to keep it grounded remind myself of how lucky I am to even have this job at all and make the most of it and I'm really looking forward to doing lots of different exciting projects and keeping making videos of course for the next four months and I've got a bit more time to do it so if there's any videos that you would like to see whether that is about academic jobs or scenarios for finals or even just a bit of anatomy and physiology tuition do let me know what you'd like to see moving forward and a massive thank you once again so take care guys I'll see you next time Bye for now.